Good evening, Knights, and to our Knight families. I'm Rob Vickus, Principal of Arizona College Preparatory Erie Campus, and on behalf of the entire faculty and staff, I want to welcome you to our 2019-2020 ACP High School Awards Ceremony. We certainly acknowledge that this is a unique way of presenting this year's awards to you, but we're still very excited to celebrate all that our students have accomplished tonight. I'm proud to be associated with Arizona College Preparatory, and I look forward to recognizing many of our students on their accomplishments this year. We will recognize our seniors, honor those students who achieved academic excellence in various content areas, distribute a few special awards, and end the evening recognizing our students of the year. Before we begin recognizing so many of our students, I would like to acknowledge a couple of our teachers. As some of you are aware, Ms. Hester and Mr. Kimball will be moving on to new opportunities. I want to take this time to thank them for all they have done for our school and students. We all wish you the best and will miss you next year. And while you may not be on campus next year, we always like to remind everybody that the sun never sets on a night. I consider myself very lucky to be surrounded by such a dedicated staff. It is so easy coming to work each morning knowing that the members of the ACP Erie staff are dedicated to helping our students grow academically and personally. And I want to thank our teachers and staff for helping to create such a special educational environment. Their job never ends and I thank them for all that they do. Thank you. And then finally I would be remiss if I didn't thank the entire office and counseling staff for their help putting together this week's events. It's a huge undertaking and they do a phenomenal job and help me prepare for a virtual ceremony with so much enthusiasm. I really appreciate their help. So now let's move on to presenting our student awards. So the first group of students that we're gonna recognize this evening are those students that earned a GPA of 4.0 or higher. This is obviously a very special accomplishment and each of these individuals should be extremely proud of their academic success. The first group of students are receiving this award for the first time and they'll be receiving an academic letter. Congratulations to the following students. group of students are also receiving a GPA award of having a GPA of 4.0 or higher this evening. 
Since they have received this award in the past, they'll be receiving a bar this year to recognize this accomplishment. Again, these individuals should be extremely proud of their academic success. Congratulations to the following individuals. Now we've come to the part of the program where we recognize the members of the class of 2020. We are very proud of the accomplishments of our senior class. The class of 2020 has been accepted to 135 colleges and universities, and they've received over $24 million in scholarship offers. We encourage our students to strive for the impossible and be extraordinary. And the amount of scholarship dollars our students have been offered truly epitomizes our school's mantra. Congratulations to all the members of the class of 2020.
The next award is the Seal of Biliteracy Award. The Seal of Biliteracy is an award given by a school, district, or state in recognition of students who have studied and attained proficiency in two or more languages by high school graduation. We are very proud of these students. Maria Rosales, Kayla Baker, Angelina Brazen, Nathan France, Junyi Gao, Vanessa Gosen, Kazushi Iwamoto, Sharmila Nimkar, Nadia Padilla, Denise Ramirez, Brisa Sorano, Tendal Wiegen, Natasha Zimmerman, and Sar Zucci. Congratulations to each of you. The National Hispanic Recognition Program recognizes approximately 5,000 Hispanic Latino juniors each year from among the more than 400,000 juniors who take the PSAT. As with the National Merit Scholarship Program, the National Hispanic Recognition Program uses the junior year PSAT and MSQT as the qualifying test. We are honored that the following seniors have participated in the program and earned the designation of National Hispanic Scholar. Congratulations to Julia Diaz, Octavio Diaz, Emma Fendrick, Nathan France, Mia Gomez, Nicholas Matthews, and Damian Rivera. Job well done. The National Merit Scholarship Program is an academic competition for recognition and scholarships that began in 1955. High school students enter the National Merit Program by taking the PSAT, a test which serves as an initial screen of approximately 1.5 million entrants each year, and by meeting published program entry and participation requirements. In February, some 15,000 semifinalists are notified by mail at their home addresses that they have advanced to finalist standing. All winners of Merit Scholarship Awards are chosen from the finalist group based on their abilities, skills, and accomplishments, without regard to gender, race, ethnic origin, or religious preference. We are very pleased and excited to announce that this year's senior class had four National Merit finalists. Congratulations to this year's National Merit Scholars. Kazushi Iwamoto, Sharmila Nimkar, Orchi Syed, and Jaden Chen. Congratulations to each of you. Now we're to the part of the program where we recognize some of our athletes. The Senior Scholar Athlete of the Year Award is awarded to any high school senior athlete with a GPA of 3.8 or higher who received accolades in their sport and has demonstrated exceptional sportsmanship. I am pleased to announce that this year's Senior Scholar Athlete of the Year is Julia Golikowski. Congratulations, Julia. The Athlete of the Year Award is presented to the high school student who has demonstrated exceptional sportsmanship and received high accolades in their sport. And I'm extremely honored to announce that this year there was a tie. And this year's Athletes of the Year are Krista Rowan and Jad Masbudi. Congratulations to both of you. We're down to our final two awards for the evening. The first is the Knight Award. The Knight Award is an annual award given to two students who continually display aspects of excellent character in all that they do. They are role models both in and out of the classroom and their actions contribute not only to their success but also to the success of those around them. These students are willing to step out of the spotlight in order for others to shine and they are not afraid to stand up for what is right and fair. They are truly good kids who lead by example while helping to make ACP a great place. Please congratulate this year's recipients of the Knight Award. Vanessa Gosen and Elias Jones, congratulations. Our final award this evening is for the High School Students of the Year. The faculty is excited to recognize one male and one female student from high school as the Student of the Year. These students truly epitomize the qualities we hope to find in an Arizona College Preparatory student and are so deserving of this honor. Congratulations to our 2019-2020 Students of the Year. Hannah Say and Taman Trom. Congratulations to you, each of you and congratulations to all of tonight's award winners. We are so proud of each of you and so appreciate you being a part of our school community. This year has certainly been a rewarding year. It's been a fun year 
It's been a successful year, and it's obviously been a very unique year, especially the end of our year. I want to wish those that are graduating the best of luck on future success. You're going to be missed next year, but know that the mark that you leave on our school will last for years. And for those of you that are returning in the fall, we can't wait to see you again on these halls, and we look forward to welcoming you back to ACP. Have a wonderful summer, and thank you for viewing tonight's awards night ceremony. Have a great night, Knights. And now for a special treat. Each year we invite the senior members of the graduating class to write a speech to be considered for graduation. We received numerous speeches this year and they were all fantastic. Unfortunately, we can't have everybody join in at the ceremony. We want to make sure that their words and wisdoms and thoughts were shared with us this year. So at this time, we're very excited to have a few of our members of the senior class share their speech with all of us this evening. Thank you. For 20 tardies my junior year and an additional 30 this year, I would like to congratulate myself for making it here before anyone else. Can I get an award for that? I'm honored to give this speech. I really am. Almost as I am underqualified to give it. I apologize to those family members who spent a countless number of minutes ensuring their Wi-Fi was good, searching for an enlightening speech. I can't give that to you. This will be more like a third grade dance recital. The best part is when it ends. You know, this moment is not just about myself or my classmates. It is also to celebrate our parents who graduated with a COVID-19 research degree from WhatsApp University and the College of Facebook. Parents, congratulations and thank you for everything that you are. Four years, four long grueling years. Four years in which we grew up and learned to live in love. Four years that prepared us for what comes now. Four years today, 40 years tomorrow. High school was fun. We returned a page in our life. We moved from childhood into adulthood. And now is the time to find our passion. It's time to learn what we want to be if we haven't figured it out or follow our dream if we have. So parents, open up your wallets because studying philosophy isn't cheap. Every single one of you seniors before me has either heard of me or knows me personally. But for those of you who don't, my name is Norsha Block. Thank you for opening your ears and giving me a moment to say goodbye. Where do I begin? I guess where it all started. Most of you I've known for 12 years. Others six and very few four. Nonetheless, we're all in our home in our pajamas clicking through this video with heavy hearts, not saying goodbye to each other but to an education system in which we held on to so closely for the past 12 years. 
When you click turn in on that last Google Classroom assignment, your life truly begins. This is your chance to make yourself into what you want. I'm really going to miss our annual grumpy face speech, or the excitement felt after Mr. Bickus remembers my name. From freshman year feather circles, moving into acting out Shakespeare with our shrimp hats, diving into our 60 seconds of solitude, a break from reality, and ending with a split between weekly timed rights and never ending research papers, we say goodbye to the comfort of the squeaky brown desks, or in this case, Google Classroom and all the technical difficulties. For the rest of you who luckily have another shot at this, I wish you the best of luck. In school, we're taught lessons and then given a test. But out there, we're given a test that teaches us a lesson. These past 12 years have prepared us for the test, the test of life. Topics include college, marriage, children, disappointment, love, happiness, and friendship. We've laid the foundation for forever. Trust in the process and for one last time. Strive for the impossible and be extraordinary. Have a great rest of your life. I'll see you at the reunion. Hi everyone, my name is Vanessa Gosen and I'm a senior at ACP. First of all, I would like to say that I am very honored to have been given the opportunity to present this speech. Fresh for me would have never thought I would be here giving a farewell speech to all my best friends. To the seniors, I never thought our senior year would end like this. Little did we know our last day of high school was the day before spring break, where some of us rushed out of school eager to celebrate the fact that there was one more quarter left of our high school careers, not saying goodbye to anyone. Fourth quarter was supposed to be our quarter, last time to make those memories in those desks, last time to see our friends in the hallways, last time to eat our lunch in the cafeteria, and the last time to dance up with one another at prom. We were robbed cheated, leaving with a feeling of emptiness. However, I could not think of a single thing I would change about this year. Even though we may not be able to walk out during the senior walkout, saying goodbye to all of our friends, new or old, we made that year, or meet up one last time in the gym, I know we will push through, brainstorm, brainstorming on how to have a few last memories together as a class. I love you guys so much. Thank you to everyone watching. Thank you to everyone who is a part of this school and has made it feel like a family. Thank you to our supportive principal, Mr. Bickus, even if you can't remember our names at times. And last but not least, thank you to our teachers, parents, families, and friends who have supported us throughout our high school career. You have all shaped us into the people you see today, and I can say in total confidence that without your constant love and support, we would not be who we are today. To the class of 2020, as students and friends, we have made many memories together, some good and some questionable ones. However, we have overcome them all, most of which we can now look back upon and laugh. I am thankful to say that no matter what, we never hesitated to have each other's backs. I consider myself truly lucky to have met you all, some since seventh grade, and to be even part of the and to be part of the strong bond we have created despite the final quarter of our high, of our high school careers. We have had some of the best teachers who truly cared about us and taught us with passion. I will never forget tie-dyeing shirts with Mr. J in chemistry. Oh, and can't forget about the mole day parties. Never forget crossing the Oregon Trail with Miss Bunch and A-Push, and never forget writing essays every day in AP Lang with Miss Lindstrom. These teachers and many more gave everything they had in hopes of molding us into the great contributors to society. Fellow graduates, I've known you all for a very long time, and I know that each and every one of you has something special in you. You are also created and creative and have so much drive, so please promise me, promise me that no matter how cliche this sounds, you will always stay true to yourself. To all the students at ACP, there is a special quote I'd like to share. As Steve Jobs once said, don't let the noise of other opinions drown out your own inner voice. And most important, have the courage to follow your heart and intuition. They somehow already know what you truly want to become. Everything else is secondary. So don't worry about the opinions of others or about what pe other people think of you or how they perceive you. In this process, we forget our, about our own real self, the person we really are. The real path to success and happiness is the real self of your own inner voice, your conscious. Never ignore it. I really hope to see you all conquer life in your own fantastic way in the, no in the way I know you can. Up until recently, I was really nervous whenever I thought about finishing school and starting a new chapter. But standing here today, after pushing through senior year, no matter what got thrown in our way, such as online school, not being able to fulfill, fulfill our senior memories, I am filled with such excitement to venture into another world, the next chapter, and offer all I have. I hope this school nurtures the future seniors, and I wish you luck for next year, class of 2021. Hopefully your senior year is better than ours, but that may be a bit hard to beat. To the class of 2020, I love you all so much and I'm going to miss you dearly. Thank you for the best memories and laughs. I can't wait to hear from you all soon. 
Thank you all for making my ACP journey so special, and once again, congratulations to the class of 2020. Good evening, Knights, and our families, faculty, and friends. Briefly, before I begin the fun part of the speech, I would just like to begin with a quick acknowledgement of our current circumstances. I know that this ceremony is not exactly how all of us would have imagined graduating. COVID-19 has so dramatically reshaped the narrative of what was supposed to be the best part about high school. Prom, the senior walk down the hall, the graduation ceremony and parties. However, I feel the need to point something out. So many coronavirus victims and medical professionals have lost their lives in the face of this crisis, and our hearts go out to them and their families. But if we can learn anything from history, it is that even when everything feels hopeless, the strong, the resilient, and the optimistic find reasons to celebrate. Amid fear and uncertainty, we must be brave enough to count our blessings. We are finishing a chapter of our lives, moving on into adulthood and opportunity, and that is such a huge accomplishment. We have so many good memories and so many good friends that deserve to be celebrated. In the last few months, my fellow Knights have found different ways to connect and enjoy each other's company online, and more time to spend at home with our families. And that is what we will choose to remember of our senior year. The fact that we are here today celebrating is a testament to our collective strength, patience, and hopefulness. Our visions for the future are a little unclear right now, but when we look back, we will see years filled with growth. At the beginning of every freshman year assembly, Mr. Bickus always tells each class the same thing. You can either ask what happened, watch things happen, or make things happen. Freshman year was a time of sudden change, loneliness, and hardship. Alliances were blurry, and the future was uncertain and scary, but we learned to take comfort in each other and pushed ourselves outside of our small, comfortable middle school world in order to make things happen. We learned the customs and traditions of ACP, attended our first Royal Flush, night games, sporting events, and high school dances. And as each year passed, our vision came more and more into focus. And we began to recognize ourselves as more than just a small school filled with even smaller cliques, but as a cohesive class that recognized each other as part of our high school experience. On the first day of senior year, we successfully put on what was, in my completely unbiased opinion, one of the best first day of school assemblies in ACP history. But between the space theme skits and glow stick raves, Mr. Bickus kept talking about every person every day. And I'm not gonna lie, it initially struck me as that mumbo jumbo motivational stuff that adults keep saying because it sounds wise and cryptic like knowledge is power or never take the beaten path or just because it says non-toxic doesn't mean you can eat it. But after this final year of high school, I got it. Every person every day. The people sitting around you have for the last four years served as your classmates, cheerleaders, teammates, peers, and best friends. Yet many of us will never see each other again. Personally, I'm not too bummed because it means we can finally stop dating everybody else's exes in every statistically possible combination. More importantly, however, every single person here has been absolutely pivotal, not only to everything we accomplished, but also our collective vision for the future. There are, I think, a few people who genuinely deserve a huge round of applause for everything that they've done to us. So thank you to the teachers. Thank you to the teachers who spent so many hours making lesson plans, who arrived early in the morning for test corrections, and who stayed late into the evening for tutoring who graded papers like speed demons so that we had instant feedback. The information we've learned over the last four years may have faded just a little, but the memories and lessons that we all share are the common thread that keeps the class of 2020 united as we splinter off into the next phase of our lives. I don't remember my Vesper shapes anymore, but I can make a bang and tie-dye t-shirt. Writing an argument essay can get frustrating, but that's okay because I have 60 seconds of solitude, my daily, quick, easy meditation. I can't remember why Dorothy Dix was important, but I do know I could survive on the Oregon Trail with nothing more than a mule, a wagon, and a raging case of cholera. Can I integrate properly? Mostly. 
Can I bake and mathematically model the volume of a cake in the shape of a washer revolved around the x-axis? You bet I can. As Einstein once said, education is not the learning of facts, but the training of the mind to think. So thank you once again to the teachers who trained our minds from freshman putty into analytical and partially functioning young adults. Thank you to Mr. Bickus, who made himself constantly accessible to voice our concerns and ambitions and helped us impart our vision onto ACP's community. Thank you to our parents. With the amount of time, love, and resources you sank into us, you could have built a small European nation. I hope we made you proud. This moment right now is a paradox. It is a sad ending and an exciting new beginning. A time of joy and relief, nostalgia for what came before, and anticipation for what the future holds. As we look into the 2020s, here is what we see. The class of 2022 and 2023 growing and maturing, carrying on the legacy of every class before them and creating their own. The class of 2021 taking on the responsibility of becoming the new leaders and imparters of vision. New visions that will leave ACP better than it was before. And we see the class of 2020. We have the power to change the world. So change it well. Whether you are extremely certain about what you want to be, or did some eeny meeny miny mo to select your major, the responsibility for what happens in the next decade is ours. There is no lesson plan for your life. No jingly intercom bell to tell you when the time is right to take a risk. No rubric for how to succeed. There are so many problems out there asking to be solved. Climate change, coronavirus, crisis, and conflict. Without a vision, we will stumble blindly in the dark and hope that a better future will drop right into our hands. But with the visions we have developed here with each other, what we will do instead is look forward with optimism and create a vision for ourselves. A vision of a better world. Starting today, our vision lets us strive for the impossible and be extraordinary. Because that's what knights do. Known and stepping into something new. For the past 13 years, we've woken up every day knowing exactly what we would do. School, homework, clubs, sports, activities, friends. These have always been constants. And now we face a future that is unknown and terrifying, and all of a sudden all the stupid cliche quotes begin to make sense. The sunset is nothing more and nothing less than the backside of a sunrise. It's an easy thing to say. To claim that an ending is only a new beginning in disguise. As if beginning again is any less mortifying than ending altogether. As if we spent all our lives learning to walk, and now they've shattered our kneecaps and told us, great job, now start over. We've been looking to this day as the end-all be-all. We've had 20-20 vision for as long as we've lived and now everything we ever did is behind us and what's in front of us is foreign and frightful, too dark to see. But we are the few, the lucky few that have been given flashlights, that will not spend the next few years groping about blindly, crawling on hands and knees. We are entering the workforce, the colleges, the military, the entire world with a competence and purpose that we owe to our parents and our teachers, but even more than that, to ourselves. Each one of us has climbed mountains to reach this beginning. We have worked so hard for this moment, even knowing that it was only a moment, a single grain of sand, and what came after would just be more hard work. We are ready because we have pushed ourselves to be ready. We are the graduating class of we made it. We beat everything anyone ever threw at us with the help of families who loved us and instructors who cared. The sunset is nothing more and nothing less than the backside of a sunrise. I've heard it said about the class of 2020 that we are perhaps the most divisive of any of the graduating classes to come out of ACP. And to a certain extent, that's true. We're the largest in number, the most discrepant in nature. We definitely have our factions, and some of us may not even know one another's names. But there's a mutual respect here, a unique symbiosis that can't be denied. <laughs> Don't forget how we came together and rallied behind a slogan that it's starting as nothing more than a joke. How we gave the phrase 2020 get money so much traction that we had to be formally reprimanded. Perhaps that wasn't the most productive use of our unified voice, but it certainly proved our power. When we came together, we were a force so strong, we surpassed the lines between friend groups and cliques, blurred the distinction between them and us. We are the first class to have boldly rejected a tradition that, although in its own way special and important, didn't reflect who we were and what we wanted to say. 
In that very first week of school, we found our voice, found what made us different and special. It is because of our divisiveness and our individuality that we can be so strong when put together, because we are unafraid of offering new perspectives and fighting the status quo. And the world today doesn't need more cooperators and yes-men. It needs people unsatisfied with the way that things are, unwilling to let them be wrong any longer. It needs people who break rules just because they can. The greatest strides for freedom and liberty weren't made by people who quietly accepted every no they were told. They were made by rebels, by individuals who learned through their differences that there was a happy medium between compromise and submission who by being bold and at times even being stupid and reckless changed the course of the world. We were raised to be facilitators of the future. And unfortunately, that means we were also raised to be troublemakers. <laughs> but that's not all we are. We're smart. We're driven. We are the ones that we have been waiting for. And now it's our turn to step out into the world and take our drive and our passion and our extraordinary ability to raise hell and do some good with it. A sunset is nothing more and nothing less than the backside of a sunrise. I've grown up with so many of these people. I've watched them learn and change and mature right alongside me. I've hated them and I've loved them and for 13 years my life has been built around them. And now I'm leaving them behind. Well, that's not really true because the majority of us are just going to ASU, but still, the feeling of loss is there. We're all losing something. We're losing the people we got up each morning to see. The people we wanted to impress, the people we couldn't stand, the people that have in some way, shape, or form ingrained themselves into us as friends, classmates, peers, and soon enough, memories. So take a good look around. Because even if you haven't adored each and every one of the individuals standing here today, these are still the names and faces that have shaped your youth. And you're gonna miss them. You're gonna miss your classmates and you're gonna miss your teachers. You're gonna miss the school that kept you from getting to bed before 12 in the morning every night. The school that worked you to the bone for the past four or more years. The school that made you unsure whether you would die of boredom or exhaustion first. You're gonna miss it. Because like it or not, ACP has played a major factor in making us who we are today. It has provided us with an environment in which to learn and screw up and grow and change. Our formative years were spent within the walls of the school that we so frequently joke looked like a prison. But despite those jokes and jabs, despite every struggle and failure we faced in our high school careers, we made this place home. ACP is a home to each and every one of us, and we owe it our gratitude. So thank your classmates and your teachers, not just out of obligation, but because they were a part of the home that we built. So that even if the relationships we made here dissolve into little more than Snapchat streaks, we'll remember how important they were. A sunset is nothing more and nothing less than the backside of a sunrise. I realize that there is no such thing as forever. That every moment is fleeting. That every permanence ends. But I'd like for this to be forever. This instance, this convergence between our youth and our adulthood, our past and our future, I want it to be an eternity. I want to remember what it felt like looking at the familiar faces, not knowing if I'd ever see them again, but knowing that for once, we were all existing in unison. Our hearts beating in time together, beating to a rhythm of pride and joy and uncertainty. Our eyes looking forward with a vision untarnished by the bleakness of the world we live in now. Blind with determination, alight with a hope for something different, something better. Make this moment last forever. Remember who you were today and keep it with you for the rest of your life. Because even if we are the most divisive class, we're still ACP's graduating class of 2020. We'll always share that. A sunset is nothing more and nothing less than the backside of a sunrise. So when the sun sets tonight, remember every moment of laughter and strife you've had for the last four years. And cherish them. Cherish this ending and this beginning and know that everything we are and everything we will become we owe some small piece of it to the people Standing beside us Keep these memories and hold them tight because in the end they're all we have They're all that will drive us and they're all that will make us the men, the men and women we choose to be Little pockets of forever Sunrises and sunsets in a school campus that looked like a prison and felt like a home People whose faces you'll forget and whose names you'll never hear again. Moments and flashes and fleeting, quiet eternities that prepare us for a future that we will make great. 
be brave and be reckless and be diligent. And appreciate every sunset. Hey there, I'm Taylor Smith. If you're watching this video, it means that you're either a senior I'm graduating with, or you're somebody's grandparents, or you're my grandparents. In any case, I'm here today, joined by people far more qualified than I am to speak to our student body. Truthfully, I wrote about a dozen speeches to recite today, but it seems that every week they become outdated by some, by some virus or the president or something stupid. My original draft was a rousing speech about how we should not fear the future, how we should not fear change, nor circumstance, nor failure. And to an extent, that's still what I want to talk about, even if I'm now ordering this to pandemic survivors who have basically seen everything. Global contagion aside, I'm not standing in front of just any class of students. The senior class of 2020 is composed of some of the most profound and talented students I have ever had the pleasure of meeting. Here are some facts to prove my point. Combined, this senior class of 2020 has totaled over 160,000 AR points, with over a third of those points coming from the Diary of the Wimpy Kid franchise alone. We've got Cactus detailing AZ. Statistically, about 89% of us wash our hands with soap, but 0% of us wash them for at least 20 seconds, because that's psychotic and the CDC should be ashamed for even suggesting that. In all seriousness, we have a state champion wrestler, a formidable and ruthless speech and debate team. I know basically nobody knew about this or cared, but the swim team has been killing it for the past four years. And because I'll never get another chance, I must give a personal shout out to my brothers in the historic Super Smash Brothers Club. I would not be here today without you guys. For the rest of my time, I want to elaborate on something I feel most of us have been struggling with recently, uncertainty. We've spent our entire lives wandering through a massive and ruthless forest. In our endless journey to conquer this forest, we have been following the path that those before us already created. A path built by our parents, our educators, the Hamburglar, our peers, Pitbull, and everybody they ever got into a fight with online. But now, at exactly this moment in time, we have arrived at the end of the path. If you are watching this video with any semblance of fear or uncertainty in your heart, I implore you to embrace it. Do not run from fear, because it is in our subjugation of fear that we may get the chance to become greater. Do not squander the gift that we have been given, the ability and tools to act of our own accord to break the status quo, to become the protagonist of our stories, to boldly go where nobody has gone before, because even if you end up somewhere new through failure, you have created history. If you need proof, I once posted a video on YouTube called How to Get Away with Murder, and that video will outlast me on this planet. If there's anything that we have learned in the last three months, it is that the world is in dire need of people ready to act. This is the gift that we have been given. Truthfully, we no longer need a path to see the way forward. We are no longer learning how to write the stories of our lives. We now hold the pen. We may never learn how to not be afraid, but we can learn how to master fear. We may never learn to deny hesitation, but in our conquest for perfection, we become the architects of our lives, the protagonists of our stories, and the mold breakers and innovators of the world around us. If you still fear failure, remember that where we are right now, in this moment, is built from both our successes and our failures. Remember that the Minions movie made $336 million worldwide. Million dollars. Worldwide. If you still fear ridicule, just remember that there are still people who think that the coronavirus was made in the lab. People who walk among us, live and breathe like we do, think that the Chinese were trying to assassinate old people and Tom Hanks just to see if they could. If you fear ridicule, just remember that you could say just about anything these days. Speak confidently, act confidently, and your words will land, even if those words are absolutely wrong. If you still fear mistakes and missteps, I want you to think about how much a different life would be if you never lost anything. It would be boring. Think about how they made a Minions movie, and then they decided to make a second Minions movie, and tell me you've ever made a mistake worse than that. If you still fear change, then you fail to see yourself as the catalyst for it. As Remy from Ratatouille once said, change is nature, dad. You are your own master of change, the sole author of your story. You are the dad. So do not let yourself fall victim to the conceived notions of powerlessness. And lastly, if you fear getting lost in the woods, do not succumb to complacency and the temptations of fear, because you may have just created a new path through that forest. If you spend the rest of your life searching for a path to follow, you'll never look away from the ground. Thank you and congratulations, class of 2020. May you keep looking forward, and please, for the love of God, do not stop washing your hands. Did it!